Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Mission Matters. My name is Adam Torres, and if you'd like to apply to be a guest on the show, just head on over to missionmatters.com and click on Be Our Guest to Apply. All right, so today is a very special episode. We have a return guest on the show, Wendy Serena, who's founder and CEO of North Shore Exchange. Wendy, first, I wanted to say, hey, welcome back to the show. Thank you, Adam. We're so glad to be here. Oh my gosh. So um, nothing that makes me happier than to have a return guest, especially one with a story like yours. So we'll get into today some of the, you know, ex- the growth of North Shore Exchange, some of the things that have gone on, um, virtual consignment going on now, uh, I believe acquiring a new, a new building, a warehouse, new yep. grants that you've awarded to charities. I mean, now tipping the $3 million point in grants and awards given. I mean, you got a whole lot going on there. Wendy. Um, But we'll start this episode the way that we start them all with our Mission Matters Minute. So Wendy, we at Mission Matters, we amplify stories for entrepreneurs, executives, and experts. That's our mission. Wendy, what mission matters to you? What mission matters to me and to North Shore Exchange is to create opportunities for our communities to participate in our mission. And we are a unique combination of luxury consignment, designer shopping, and volunteerism to generate profits for charities that serve the poor. And consigners and shoppers and volunteers can all participate in our mission and feel good about giving back by either consigning, um, volunteering, or shopping. And we keep our overhead low with our fabulous volunteers. Mm -hmm. Um, We're fiercely competitive against our for-profit resale shops that we compete against. Um, We make sure that we have competitive pricing and better payouts than our competition. Um, And then we give our customers a great value and a feel good um, feeling every time they buy something. So they leave with the highest customer delight that they can have. So that's our mission. And our mission really truly is just to generate uh, profits to give away to Chicagoland charities that serve the poor. Ah, it's a great story and I love bringing mission-based executives and companies like yours um, on the line to share why they do what they do, like how they're making a difference and, you know, what we can all learn and grow from together from those stories. So um, again, great to have you back on. And Wendy, I want to start this interview. So I was thinking about it last night and I know that maybe some of our newer audience members that have, that have been following the show recently, maybe they didn't catch our, our previous episodes and things that we've done together. So let's just kind of start from the beginning. Like, okay. how did this idea of North Shore Exchange come about? Like, tell us some of the history. Okay. So I have been doing a bunch of work for a bunch of different nonprofits, and I've been spending a lot of time asking people for money. Mm-hmm. And I was thinking about a new way to generate money that nonprofits need. They need operating mm-hmm. revenue. They need um, uh, funds for growth. And how mm-hmm. do we do that? And there was this little thrift shop in the town I live in. Mm-hmm. It wasn't doing very well. And we decided, let's try a different concept. Um, And so we came up with this concept, which is luxury resale. Um, We sell designer women's fashion and beautiful things for the home. Mm -hmm. Um, And we, you know, we run with a a volunteer, so our overhead is low. And that combination um, just was right on trend. We got really lucky, right on trend. We had a great supply of wonderful things. And we had customers that were interested in what we had. And Mm -hmm. so we started um, nine years ago uh, and and we opened up on a snowy day in March in 2013. And we had a line of about 30 people outside the door Mm -hmm. waiting to come in. And we opened our doors and we've made a profit every single year, even during COVID. Um, Even when we had to shut down during COVID for a few months, we made a profit every year. So we feel very lucky that our business model makes sense to people. Mm -hmm. And we are offering things that people want to buy and we have a, a we offer a service of a way for people to sell their really nice things. Hmm. I want to stick in these early days a little bit longer here because okay. uh, we'll, we'll get into where you're at now, which is just absolutely amazing. But I want to stick in these early days because there's a lot of you know entrepreneurs and executives that watch this program and they're looking for you know what whatever that edge is or that thing that can also help them in their businesses, whether it's you know nonprofits or or for profit various industries doesn't matter. But one thing that I know is that for you to get from that concept 
of, you know, having a, a new store, trying a new model to a thesis, right? Testing it out and then getting it to execution to then getting it to, to work, right? And to prove the concept. Um, it's not an easy thing to do. So what do you think are some of the things that helped you take it from, let's just say, idea to reality? What are some of those things that helped you along the way? I think what we did is looked at, we looked at a lot on why thrift shops and resale shops fail. Hmm what makes them fail, and then what makes them successful. And you have to start with a business plan. I had somebody come in and say, oh, I want to start one. And my husband says, you need a business plan. I'm like, you do. You need a business plan. You have to think it all through. You have to project what you think you can sell. You have to lowball what that is. You have to look at your cost and see if you mm -hmm. can make money. Um, and you have to build it up from the bottom. Yeah. And so that's what we did. And um, we, we did lowball our our estimates and we beat them every time. And that feels good to the team of people. But then you have to have people that love the idea. And um, we had a bunch of people come on board in the very beginning who loved the concept. Yeah. Um, and that was very affirming. Um, and then to build it and create it and then have um, customers mm -hmm. come in and love it. That was huge. Yeah. And, and to be clear here, you didn't have a background in running a retail store, I believe. Am I off on that? No, no. I, I, I've never run a retail store in my life. <laughs> what I did have is I had a business background. And yeah. I, I worked in product marketing for Kraft General Foods. Yeah. And um, I was a product manager and a marketing director for them. And I learned how to, how to write a business plan. Mm -hmm. I learned how to write a marketing plan. I learned how to do operations mm -hmm. um, and sales. And so I, that was a really good basis mm -hmm. for for having the right skills to do this, even though I had never run a resale shop before. Yeah. Yes. And, and another, I think, key ingredient that you mentioned here is really getting a community to rally around. I don't mean just, mm -hmm. um, just customers and clients. I mean, also the individuals that are executing at the store level and, you know, mm -hmm. helping day to day. So, mm -hmm. so the volunteers, um, what do you think was some of the, the secret or the, the, uh, the ability that allowed you to maybe to rally, rally the troops, so to speak, to, towards that one common mission? I think we had an amazing group of people in the beginning yeah. um, and we have, we still have an amazing group of people. It's just grown, um, mm -hmm. but people wanting to lend their talents. And these, these are people that were lawyers, were social workers, yeah. were, you know, were, had big careers and now they weren't working um, and they had time mm -hmm. and, and they were like the Pied Piper. Yeah. That, I had a bunch of Pied Pipers <laughs> out there in the community talking about this idea. And I, and it was just, you know, you have a little elevator speech. You say, Hey, mm -hmm. we have this concept we think we have great supply here in Glencoe. We, we think we'll, we'll, help, we'll appeal to customers. What, do you, what can you do to help us? And everybody rallied around to help us. They gave us donations of plumbing. They gave us donations of, of flooring, carpet, painting, tiling. And we all, it was a labor of love for a whole group of people. Hmm. Um, and I think that enthusiasm spread out from there. Wow. Yeah, it's amazing. And I think the um, the idea of having that mission behind that you could really make a difference and then just in executing on that, like, like day in and day out, it makes a big difference, especially over time, because I can, I can tell you, and you may not know this about Mission Matters, but I mean, when we started, I mean, it was just myself, a cell phone and uh, some headphones. And I like to think that all of my uh, initial interviews, you know, all thousands of them before maybe anybody cared to watch, right? <laughs> Um, thousands of them. That was my volunteer army of of business yeah. owners and executives that cared enough to get out about, you know, paying it forward to come on a program that nobody listened to in the beginning, right? And tell their story and to lend their ear and to give their advice um, and to help promote. So we had that volunteer army. So um, as well that that I that you're mentioning. Uh, so I can kind of see some similarities there, and I see like how if you execute over time and you stay true to that mission and if you stay true to what you said you were going to do like some some magical things can happen um and i speaking of uh, uh magical things i think that's a good time to maybe bring us up into a little bit more of present day because mm -hmm. you you've grown quite a bit so maybe yep. tell us a little bit about about the growth over the last nine years so we we just have grown i don't think we've ever had a year where we've grown um, less than 10%. Mm. Um, and this past year, during COVID, we grew 50%, which was the wow. surprise for all of us because um, we opened our doors and we weren't sure who would come and who felt safe coming out mm -hmm. during that time. But we all wore masks. Um, mm -hmm. Our customers wore masks. And I think that everybody felt safe in our smaller environment. Mm. Um, 
And so that helped. But then we grew 30% last year and we're on track to grow another 30% this year. So um, it's we have learned to be uh, pickier about the things we take. We want to offer a great selection. So there is that customer delight. So we're picky about what we take yeah. so that our consigners can earn the most. And they, you know, they bring their best and we, and we can earn them the most and to, and our customers can get the best value. Yeah. So we, we, we've just gotten better over the years. Um, we still have a long way to go in terms of efficiency and effectiveness. Uh, we're learning every day, but um, it's working. And I think I, we laugh sometimes that we make money in spite of ourselves because <laughs> <laughs> we don't, you know, we, we have to learn what to do. We don't, we don't have any experts here. So yeah. we, we do our best. We use our brains. We try to mm-hmm. take the most, uh, prudent, pragmatic approach and, and, and it works. Uh, speaking of, I, I believe, speaking of it working, um, I believe you're in the flagship store there right now, am yes, I right? Yes, and, I and am. The items have... that you take, I'm looking behind, I'm yep. not claiming I know everything, but, uh, yep. but, um, that tell us a little bit more about the store. So this store, Glencoe was the one that we opened in 2013 and it's our biggest volume store. It takes in the most consignment as well. Um, and it really sets the stage for the other two stores that are trying to keep catch up and they are catching up. It's a, the city store and, and our new store are, are doing great um, mm. as they are getting established in their communities. But this store, you know, got, got nestled in the exact right spot, right yeah. spot for both shoppers and consigners. Um, and it's and it's doing great. And it has a wealth of fabulous volunteers. And many of them have been with us from the very beginning. Amazing. Um, so they so they've been they've been here. For, for nine years oh, um, and we get lots of new ones too but it's just that that's the the beauty of the community mm-hmm. and what's interesting about that is we created a community a community of shoppers a community of consigners a community of volunteers um, and now a community of uh, grantees that we give grants mm-hmm. to and so speaking of the grants so you're just crossing that or, or, or I shouldn't say just cross you know a little over 3 million so 3 million 100,000 something I don't have the exact number but um that's a lot of money you've given away so I guess yeah. going a, a a step deeper into your model um tell mm-hmm. us you know a little bit more about how the profits are distributed Okay so we're we're actually at 3.2 million 3.2 so, uh, there's my new hold on. <laughs> don't want to short you 100,000 hold on here <laughs> 3, 3, 3. 3.2 yeah. Um, we have a philanthropy committee and we have a grant application process. So the we had 81 grantees apply this year, and that was up from 55 last year. So it message is getting out. Mm-hmm. And then they go through a rigorous review process from our philanthropy committee. We look at their financials. We do site visits. Um, we look at what they're going to use the money for. We look how, at that, how big they are, whether they could absorb a grant. And we look at b- things like, um, do they need it for operating? money because these charities re- need operating money. They need everyday money. And then do they have anything that they want to, they need to be transformative. Mm-hmm. And, um, and we like to do a, a combination of both. So this year we're giving 13 grants, um, 11 are operating. So it's the level of like 30 to $40,000, which they really appreciate, but we're giving two $100,000 grants this year to mm-hmm. two organizations that have some ideas that are going to transform their mm-hmm. delivery of their services. And I can tell you about one of them, if you'd like. Oh, please. Um, yes. I, okay. You know, you know okay. I wasn't going to let you get away without, with that. I'm like, hold on. Well, I, I need to know I, about I, I'd love to talk about old, old Irving Park um, Healthcare Clinic. Um, and that is a, they're, they're a new um, organization we gave to them last year, but we're giving them a hundred thousand dollar grant. And what's cool about that is the, the man who started it, is 88 year old Dr. Martinez, hmm. and he retired from being a doctor, and he joined with a friend to open this free clinic. <laughs> and they're they're in this poor area of Chicago, mm-hmm. and they've been operating for about a little over 20 years. Mm-hmm. And they've had times where they were, were were worried that they couldn't keep their doors open. Yeah. Um, and then angel angels fall from the sky. We, we were the angel this year that kind of fell from the sky and, and gave them a big grant and they were thrilled. And what's cool mm-hmm. about them is that for every dollar you give them, they mm-hmm. generate $6 in free health care. Wow. So it's really impactful. They're able to do that because they have volunteer doctors, volunteer nurses, and really the the what gets paid for is the lab fees and the janitorial mm-hmm. staff and things like that. So our grant, they've been they've been only operating during the week and 
they they have so many people that with child care and work mm. and senior care that they have to do they can't get there during the day yeah. so they ask they've been asking for evening hours and saturday hours mm -hmm. and our grant gives them that so they will wow. be opening their doors one evening a week and on saturday so they are thrilled um, with the opportunity to do that and they can and that helps them help yeah. more people so that's a really we feel so happy about that um and that's an uh, amazing number excited. too i don't want to i don't want to glance over that number yeah. so for every one dollar given there's six dollars in impact yeah mm -hmm. yep it's huge it's a, it's amazing i mean that's, that's just amazing that it just feels so off. good in yeah. any business period yeah. like that's huge yeah. so we are so happy to help dr martinez um expand his mm -hmm. care uh, and love to the the community that they're in yeah. So. Any any others that you care to you care to mention? Yeah, well, I'll that. tell like, you. About I'm hooked over here. I'm yeah, like, yeah, yeah. So I'll tell you about Nourishing Hope, and that was previously just changed their name from Lakeview mm -hmm. Pantry to Nourishing Hopes. They've got a new name, and they um, during the, the pandemic, their mm -hmm. demand for food they do they do give food to people, and their demand for food you know went off out the out the roof, mm -hmm. um, and then now with inflation and inflation prices, it's really hard for people to make ends meet. Mm -hmm. And they have a demand. And what that $100,000 is doing is it allowed them to open a warehouse. Mm -hmm. So they're opening a warehouse so they can do uh, pre, you know, prefabricated meals. Like they can put meals together and they can have more food and more food storage. Mm -hmm. And now they even have an online ordering system once a month. So you can get your weekly food. These are for people who qualify. These are people in yeah. poverty and people that, you know, are, are below the federal poverty line. Mm -hmm. And they can go in and get food for their family once a week, but then they can order some of the special items like meat and milk and eggs once mm -hmm. a month, and they can put their order in and then go pick that up. So it allows them to expand also to serve more people. And so we feel very, very proud of that too. Yeah. And so when you talk about transformative, like you mean it. Like that's oh, I, huge. Mean, I can't imagine like what that means for the community for, you know, that in, where Dr. Martinez serves to, um, you know, to be able to have those Saturday hours or that one night a week when somebody may have been putting off, you know, something that that is pretty urgent, but they just can't because they have to work. Right. 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 Yeah. And they don't they don't get easy time off. These people work yeah. hourly jobs and it's hard to get time off. Yeah. And then when you have kids at home, I mean, you just there's mm -hmm. so this this is really, really helpful. Yeah, I get it. I get it. And it is transformative. And that's going to help many people in many lives. Um, so I, I get it. And I and when you think about missions and people rallying around, it's pretty obvious to see with just these couple of stories you've shared today, um, you know, why you've been able to why the business has grown and why you've been able to give so much back to the community and back to these organizations and, uh, and charities. Um, yeah. I want to um, go into some of the, you, you did mention some of the growth, you know, over, over the last, you know, couple of years in the pandemic. And I think mm -hmm. one of the things that, um, that has just drawn me to your organization is that it's just, it's operationally efficient, meaning it is run like a business for growth because you understand that the more profit you give, the more you can give away. So mm -hmm. I understand that you've been, um, that recently a lot of investment has gone back yeah. into infrastructure for mm -hmm. North Shore Exchange. Can you tell mm -hmm. us a little bit more about that and maybe some of the decision, um, the decision making that went on behind the scenes? Yeah. So that's always tough for us. Because yeah. if we spend money on something that it, it, it doesn't go to mm -hmm. helping people. And so, you know, we're very careful about those investments. And I, mm -hmm. one of our first investments was a van. We bought a van because we needed to be able to deliver and pick up consignments. And that changed our business. That And, and, and we try to really think about it in terms of mm -hmm. where does it grow our business? And so one of the things we've been needing for a long time, we've been working out of storage lockers. Mm -hmm. Um, and we, we invested in a warehouse. So we have a 7,000 square foot warehouse. Now we, we just <laughs> moved in there in December and that's been a game changer. It's yeah. because we can take whole house consignments. We can mm -hmm. take furniture, lamps, rugs, and everybody's, you know, clothes. If they're like moving to, we have a lot of people moving to Florida and they want to get rid of everything. We can yeah. take the whole thing because we have space now. Yeah. Um, when we get ready for our big sidewalk sale, that's our biggest sale of the year where we, mm -hmm. we make a lot of money at the end of the year. And uh, we are able to store stuff for that sale. Um, mm. And we're able to move and make our stores look beautiful and make things sell faster and yeah. be able to turn merchandise faster because we have better access. So that was a, that was a big investment. 
um, that happened in December. Mm-hmm. Um, and my board has been great. They they got pushed hard this year in terms of all the kinds of investments, but they were right there wanting mm-hmm. to do it. Um, the next one was we bought our Glencoe building before we've been mm-hmm. leasing our Glencoe building. Um, we've had really nice landlords. The Women's Library mm-hmm. Club was our landlord. And they decided they didn't want to own a building anymore. So we, we mm-hmm. bought it. Um, and that was a big investment for us, but it was, it, it really is existential to our survival. Yeah. And the reason is it's uniquely located and we're able to do our sidewalk sale right in the front under a big tent. And yeah. we, there's no other retail space that we could do the same things that we do in, in this Glencoe space. Yeah. And so we decided it was really important to take advantage of the low interest rates mm-hmm. and, and, and buy the building. And so that's what we did. Yeah. Um, so, and then the last thing I should mention is we we had one store at a at a shopping mall that wasn't it was doing fine, but it wasn't doing as well as it could yeah. if it would have been in a nestled in a community like the Glencoe store. Mm-hmm. So we moved um, we knew we moved our third store to Wilmette mm-hmm. and Wilmette's delighted to have us. They've been welcoming us with open arms. We've gotten great volunteers, great consignment. Mm-hmm. And that store is doing great. So those were our three big things that we accomplished this year. It was a lot, but it was exactly the right thing to do. So the Glencoe store, um, obviously that makes perfect sense. So that, I mean, straightforward, I mean, and moving, moving the other store, I I can see why you'd have done that, but I just have to ask, was it a little scary when you thought, okay, we're taking on a 7,000 square foot warehouse? Like me, I'm trying to put it in my head. I know it's the right thing to do by the way, but was it a little scary? Oh, it's completely scary, <laughs> especially because we didn't know how to run a warehouse. So yeah, that's, that's what I'm thinking. Like, I'm like, how do we run a warehouse? Like a big piece of warehouse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it it's been amazing. It's it's mm. been amazing right away. Like it just yeah. some interesting side benefits that you don't think. I guess mm. unintended consequences. You call yeah. them. I guess is that we it's a place to collaborate. We didn't really oh, have a place yeah. to collaborate yeah. and work together easily. And yeah. so it really has provided that. So I think that has improved our efficiency just mm. because we can there collaborate and we have space. Yeah, I, I can see that. And I so this is like, all right, well, we, we went through this once with the with the van when we acquired that. We didn't mm-hmm. know how to do that. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and now we're getting a warehouse like as you as you add and, and build on with this this infrastructure. It's great because it that that's how business is built. Like uh, the executives that are watching this and the other business owners that are watching this, they're probably like reminiscing. I know I'm reminiscing about, you know, when you make those initial investments and then you, then you kind of up the ante, right? Because you want right. to grow. And in your case, you want to make more profit and do more good so you can give more away. Right. I think it's a great story. Yeah. Well, thank you. Yeah. So um, that being said, I also understand um, virtual consignment was another, Mm -hmm. like, as we're all kind of thinking about different ways to operate and new ways to do business. I think this was a big one that um, that was on the agenda, right? Yep, it was. And it it really stemmed from our um, sales are nationwide. Mm -hmm. So we, we are, our store is on our online store sells things uh, all over the country. Some of our best customers are in New York and California and Florida, Indiana, Wisconsin, Michigan, um, Arizona. Like we have customers everywhere. They go on our website and it's funny. They sometimes go in the middle of the night because they think something might go on sale. They'll they'll be the first ones to see something (laughs) new. Um, And so we have these relationships with these really Mm -hmm. um, wonderful relationships, uh, Mm -hmm. you know, repeat purchasers. And we thought, why aren't we doing that for consignment? Mm -hmm. Why, Why aren't we? And, you know, Zoom cha- was a game changer for yeah. so many. Zoom and, you know, um, Microsoft Office or whatever people use, um, it, it's a game changer. And mm-hmm. so you can go into someone's home. It's so much more convenient um, for them. And they can show you what they have. We can talk to them about what we take. We can talk to them about how much value they would get out of selling whatever they have. Mm-hmm. And it's so much easier for them. And yeah. then we can send them a shipping label and they can send it to us. Or yeah. we can, or we can send the van and pick it up if they're because we have a lot of virtual consignments right around here too because people mm. are busy. So, um, so that that has been a huge uh, benefit. And consignment is, I mean, selling with us is a we have to have consigners and sellers yeah. because we don't order our merchandise. Everything mm. comes from the consigners, and so we don't order anything. And so we, you know, it was made sense with our growth to expand Mm -hmm. our base of supply. Mm -hmm. Um, And a a lot of people love our, most people love our mission. Um, Mm -hmm. They love that that our profits go to charity. 
and and they're not for profit. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Yeah. But I'm a capitalist, and I think we all need you know we need businesses to have profit. But it you know if you're selling your things, yeah, it's really nice to know that that portion goes to charity. Yeah. And so I do, I do want to go one one level deeper on the consignment mm-hmm. idea because I don't want to assume that everybody watching this if they've never consigned anything or been through it like like how does all that work? Explain it to me, please. Okay, so we take everything from um, what we call contemporary brands like Theory, mm-hmm. Joie, Vince. The women that are listening to this, they'll know mm-hmm. exactly what that is, all the way up to Chanel and Hermes. Mm-hmm. So we take from from that and everything in between. And mm-hmm. the reason we take that group of things is because they have resale value. Mm -hmm. You know, if you Banana Republic, J Crew, we love them. Everybody likes to wear them. They don't have much resale value. Mm -hmm. And so it's not worth um, a consignment store's time to sell something for $5 when the consignor would get $2 and 50 cents. So we try to, we try to maximize the value for the consignor Mm -hmm. and for us. And so we have a whole list of brands. And then it's the same with the home accessories. We take full sets of china, full sets of crystal. We take silver. We take decorative objects. We sell a ton of art, furniture. I'm sitting at the dining room table in our Glencoe store, so we we sell a lot of furniture. Uh, right. We can't keep couches. And if anybody has a couch they want to consign from Restoration Harbor, Crate and Barrel, um, Mitchell Gold, whoever, we we they fly out of here. Like they fly out of here in two seconds, and so and they get top dollar. Um, yeah. because people are thrilled not to have to pay retail for a mm-hmm. nice sofa. So that's how it works. And so we, we, we do a virtual consignment. We do home visits. People make appointments and they come in. Home items, they can send photographs via home at NorthshoreExchange.org. If someone has home items, they can send photographs and then they get approved and then they, they can either be, they can just be brought in or we mm-hmm. can pick them up. So mm. that that's how it works. And then we pay fast. So if something sells in the first month, you get a check. So yeah. if, you, if you sold it on the fifth, you'll get a check on the on like the second mm. of the next month. So you get your money fast. Um, and that's very gratifying. So that's really how it works is it's that simple. So you can so, go to our website and, and look at all our, our requirements and, and, and make an appointment. It's mm. easy. So how do people get involved? Like whether they want to be on the consignment side um, or they want a, a shop or they want to volunteer. Like, so now we, we have an idea of the community and the ecosystem, the history, uh-huh. like how do people uh-huh. get involved? So if they want to consign, they just, they can go to our website and make mm-hmm. an appointment on um, that. And if they want to volunteer, we have, they can also go to our website or stop in one of our stores and mm-hmm. talk to the manager and say, Hey, I would like to volunteer. And mm-hmm. we have a lot of shoppers and a lot of consigners that end up end up volunteering because they, they like what we do. Um, and so that's how you get involved. And then if you, you know, if you're a customer, you just look on our website or you come in our store and then you kind of get to know us. Like we have, we, we do a, we do a fall flip and a spring flip when everything is new and people love yeah. that. And they come in and we, we have sales and, you know, so they, and we do an, we put out an e-blast um, every, every week features items. So if you wanted to be on our e-blast list, you can just go to our website. You can mm. get it added to that. So it's really easy. It's really easy. It's great. Great story, Wendy. Um, well, I just have to say it has been great having you back on the show and to catch up and to see all the, uh, all the great work and also to hear about more about the awards that will be granted, the transformational um, grants that are going out and the operational grants. Um, that being said, Wendy, um, what's next? I mean, what's next for you? What's next for North Shore Exchange? So um, we want to get into the estate sale business. We think we have a the expertise and the and the infrastructure to do that with our software system. Um, and so we we'd like to expand into estate sales because we think we can offer a unique value and also help get uh, people with estates more money for their things. Um, and we want to expand our our website, number of items, reach for that. Um, and we think that's going to make um, our business grow a lot. So. So we're hoping to do those two things, plus get more efficient. We, we're yeah. always working on that. Fantastic. Well, um, can't wait to the next time you're on the show here. And one Thank more you. time for the audience, the website, if they want to go check it out. It's NorthShoreExchange.org.
All right. And we'll, we'll put that in the show notes, of course, as well, so that our audience can just click on the links and head right on over. And uh, speaking of the audience, if this is your first time with Mission Matters or engaging with the platform, we're all about bringing on entrepreneurs, executives, and experts and having them share their mission, the reason behind their mission, why they do what they do, how they're doing it, and what can we all learn and gain and gather so that we all grow together. Uh, If that's the type of content that sounds interesting or fun or exciting to you, hit that subscribe button because we have many more mission-based individuals coming up on the line and we don't want you to miss a thing. And Wendy, again, wishing you much more continued success because I know the more success North Shore Exchange has, the more money is going to be given away to these charities and are really going to help a lot of people. So thanks again for coming on the show. Adam, thanks for having me.